Hello students, as we have read about Anton Chekhov yesterday and we have read the Boor Anton Chekhov's one act play. Today we start Stanley Houghton's The Dear Departure and then uh, after 15 minutes we have read about the Bishop's Candlesticks which is written by Norman McKennell. And tomorrow we will read about The Little Man which is written by John Galsworthy. So let's start from the second one act play, The Deer Departed, Stanley Houghton, who was born in 22 February 1881 and was died in 1813. He was a British writer, a British writer and he uh, wrote many stories about the another uh, many persons. This act or can we say this play, which is one act play shows the artificiality of relationship. The Dear Departed, it's a one act play based on the day to day lives of people. First play of the writer, this play is the first play of the writer who is Stanley's Houghton's first play. Now there are the characters of this play. There are three major characters in this play. First is Mr. Abel Mary Worthy. This is um, Abel Mary Worthy is an aged widower. He was an old man, has two, uh, two um, daughters and a granddaughter also. Second, Amelia. Amelia is her, uh, uh, Amelia is his daughter and the Elizabeth Jordan. Elizabeth Jordan is his second daughter. Amelia's husband's name is Henry Salter and Elizabeth Jordan's husband is Ben, Ben Jordan who was the wife of Ben. Amelia and Henry has a daughter named Victoria. The play. The play is a sardonic comment on the greed and intensive behavior of Abel's two daughters. These two daughters are very greedy and the protagonist of this play is Abel. Protagonist means the main leading character of this play is Abel Mary. Husbands of the two sisters are meek and obedient. They are very obedient to their wives. They do the work as their, as their wives tell them. Now, we should know about the other character of the novel, which was Victoria. Victoria is the granddaughter of Mr. Abel and the son of, uh, sorry, uh, daughter of the first, the uh, elder daughter of Mr. Abel. She is the daughter of Amenia and Henry Salter. It, uh, it can be said that the Amenia and Henry Salter has a daughter which name is, whose name is Victoria. And she is the granddaughter of Mr. Abel. She has a very important role in this play. Miss Victoria is the granddaughter of Mr. Abel and loved him very much. She is the first who found that her grandfather stopped breathing. He informs about it to his uh, father and mother, her father and mother. Next, uh, he, she found that uh, her grandpa awake or arise suddenly after a long pause. When she found that her grandpa is alive, she became very happy and said, Oh grandpa, don't go another time without informing me. The play. Now we see the headlines of the play or we can see the gist of the play. Both the daughters want to overtake the valuable things of Mr. Abel with some false trick. Elder daughter and the small daughter both are, which one is Amelia and Elizabeth. Amelia also want to overtake the property, the property which was a cloak or a bureau table of Mr. Abel and she want to overtake the property of her father. The another daughter, Elizabeth, also want to overtake the property with some false trick. Suddenly, unexpected happen. In this story, we see that uh, at a, a start we find that the old man was dead, but in the middle of the act, he arrives suddenly. And it seems that it uh, can, be an, can be a ghost or can be Mr. Abel himself. All afraid of them, afraid of him, but 
Victoria found her grandpa very uh, welcome very much happily. Suddenly, this plays a sardonic comment on the greed and intensive behavior of Abel's daughter. Sardonic comment on the greed. Both the daughters are very greedy. They want to take, they want to overtake the property of her father, of their father, but separately. Amelia wants to take the property hers, for herself and her uh, husband and for her daughter. And Elizabeth and her husband also want the same property for themselves. The play. The situation becomes very dramatic when Mr. Abel appears. It is the highest point of the story, can be said the climax of the story, when we found that Mr. Abel only sleep, uh, only in a uh, big sleep, uh, he was not dead and suddenly appear in the scene. Ben afraid of him because he thought that it is not Mr. Abel, it is the ghost of Mr. Abel. Then Victoria is very happy because her grandpa is alive. She is the only person in the all five persons of this house who loves his grandpa very much. Amelia and Elizabeth both pretend the love after the death of Mr. Abel. They only show, they only show that they love him very much because they want the property which was left by him to take. He does not, he does three things on Monday. Mr. Abel who was invisible or can be said he uh, has gone on the last Monday. He does three things on Monday. First is goes to the lawyer for will. He goes to lawyer for the will and second is insurance office and third is St. Philip's church. There is a dramatic situation because he goes to the lawyers for will. He want to make his will. Second, he goes to insurance will to, to fill his uh, pre premier and third is he goes to St. Philip's church to get married. Nobody can believe on it because an old man, he was an old man, he was a widower and he said that he had married on Philip, St. Philip's church that, was, that makes surprise to everyone. They, th uh, they thought that uh, the old man became mad or became sane. This is a story in a one act and shows the falsehood of the false relationship. The Mr. Abel and his daughters. Mr. Abel loves his daughters very much, but the daughters loves him because of the daughter love him because of his property. And the property is not very large because there is only a bureau, means a bench or it can be said in table. And then other thing is the uh, antique piece of a old clock, an old watch on a ceiling watch. Now, they pretend the love for her father, they show their false love for father. When Amelia tried to overtake the property of her father, suddenly the younger sister has appeared and she also claims for the same property which was overtaken by Amelia. Victoria refused. Victoria interprets that we should not, that they should not overtake the property, but Amelia rebukes her, rebukes her. Now we can, uh, I can summarize, uh, I may summarize, I should summarize the whole story in some words. This story shows the falsehood, falsehood of the relationship and it shows the mechanical relationship between father and uh, father and his daughters. His daughters are very selfish because they think only about their, their husbands and their family. They forget that Mr. Abel is their father and who gave them love in olden days. Style. The dialogue is in a colloquial language. Colloquial means the day-to-day -day language. We can say the conversational language. All the dialogues are written in a colloquial language. This act shows the artificiality of relationship. This is very important point that this whole act shows the artificiality of relationship. Relationship between father and daughter, relationship between husband and wife, 
all show the artificiality of relations. The play has an unexpected turn of event. When we saw in the middle, when the old man arrives suddenly, we see that the play has an unexpected turn of event. Nobody can uh, imagine that an, a dead person can alive be alive. Theme. The little deeds of ambition. There are three major characters in this play. Mr. Abel and his two daughters. And th both the daughters have ambitions. They have the ambition to overtake the property of her father. They show the greed. Another theme is greed. Both the sisters are greedy. They want the things alone. They want capture the property of their father. Then the pride. There is a moment when Mr. Abel pride of his watch and pride of his bureau table. And there are jealousy. The older, uh, elder, Joseph, uh, elder sister jealous to the younger sister and younger sister also jealous to the elder sister. Both jealous each other. Then selfishness. Both shows the selfishness. When Amelia got the chance, she overtake the bureau and the cloak. When her younger sister came and he, uh, she also blamed that Mr. Abel has promised her daughter to give the watch, which was shows which shows the selfishness of both the sisters. Now we start the next act which was written by Norman Mac Kennel and the act's name is Bishop's Candlesticks. The Bishop is the major protagonist of this play who has some candlestick as a property. This is also a humorous play, humorous act. Normal Mac Kennel is a very good playwright and Summarize hold the theme in one act only. He was born in 1870 and died in 1932. He was by profession is an actor and a playwright. He, play, uh, he plays many roles in his uh, own plays also and he was a playwright. Mind the spelling of playwright because it is not playwriter. A playwright, a person who write plays. So mind the spelling about the playwright. The bishop's candlestick. You can see the candlesticks are shown, are established in a church and bishop. One act play. This is a one act play. The play shows the kindness of bishop's behavior. The whole player is full of contrast. There are three or four major characters and they show the contrast to the character of bishop. The play shows the kindness of Bishop's behavior and the rudeness of the other characters as her sister who was very greedy, as the convict who was very rude. While, her, while his sister doesn't not like it because her sister was very greedy. She loves only money. Characters. There are three major characters in this play. First is the Bishop. The Bishop is a kind hearted person. He wants to help everyone who needs help. He works for the poor person. For it, he sold all his property one by one to help the poor. And the second is her, his sister, which is Pasom. Pasom is a greedy woman and proclaimed that his, brother's, his brother has sold all the property to help the poor and she doesn't like it. And the third major character is Convict. Convict is an outsider who want to take, who want to uh, theft, who want to catch, who want to, um, can we said, who want to theft the things of Mr. Bishops. The play. These are the headlines or these are the major point of the play. The play. The play makes effect by contrast. There are three characters. One is Mr. Bishop and then his sister and convict. The, all three characters are shows contrast between each other. Mr. Bishop is a kind hearted person and her, his sister is very selfish and the convict is very rude. And then Persom, the sister of the bishop 
scandalized that the people take advantage of her brother kindness she scandalized she tell all the other persons that the people take advantage of her brother's kindness his brother is very kind so people take advantage of him and it is right uh, can be said it is right on some points but mr bishop who has the candlesticks and other properties sold all his property one by one to help the other persons whose ever whoever came to him he helped him although he helped a thief a thief also she is very upset that her brother has sold all his property to help the poor or the other persons in contrast the bishop is dedicated and humble and grateful for the opportunity to save the poor these lines shows that bishop and her uh, his sisters characters are just contrast to each other his sister wants the property for herself and his brother for his brother and bishop who was very humble and dedicated and very grateful for the opportunity to save the poor people he all, uh, always look for the opportunity or occasion to help the poor to save the poor when the convict enters into the house of his he proved to be another contrast to bishop because he is uh, he was also a rude person and he is a greedy person also bishop is gentle and kind bishop by his character is very gentle and he always want to help other persons and he is very kind hearted while the convict is very rude harsh and brutal his character is rude his behavior is also very rude he is a thief and mr bishop want to help him and he shows his brutality he shows his rudity and it shows the contrast between the two characters bishops and the other character is convict the bishop manages food for the convict bishop knows that the convict is not a good person but he helps also the convict and he gave him food uh, he said to his sister that please manage food for the convict she refuses but Uh, at last she manages for the food for the convict now we can summarize it that mr bishop or can we said the bishop is very kind hearted person and very gentle person while his sister was not as so and the third character was very rude and which was convict which was very uh, great uh, great uh, grateful uh, not a grateful person he was very selfish person and not a thankful person then the bishop tells him to rest at his home it shows the kindness of bishop the bishop tells him please rest at night my home you are very tired your job is also very tiring which was stalling others things the convict want to stall the candlesticks because this is the only property which have bishops because all the other property has been sold by bishop so she took she took uh, he took the convict took the candlesticks and want to run with them but see how kind is mr bishop or the bishop who tells him to rest at his home it shows the kindness of bishop it is very clear point that mr bishop is very kind hearted person and he offers the candlestick to the convict he he says that you can take both the candlestick which was a very memorable things for both the brother and sister and given by their mother these are the old piece of can be said silver or other bronze type um, elements bronze type metal the language is very simple and unpretentious the language of this play is very simple and unpretentious uh, we can read it without any special pretension and now look at and compare both the plays both the plays in one thing that the first play is dear departure which shows the death of mr avel and second is the candlesticks of mr bishop in we see in india departure we see that at two there are two selfish sisters who want to overtake the property of her father of their father and we see in other hand there are 
a convict and there are a sister of a person who want to overtake the property of Mr. Bishop. This shows that all the world, all the world and all the people of the world are very selfish and they want to overtake the property of other persons. They are very rude in their behavior. They are very selfish. As we see in the boor, the boor which shows us the um, which shows us the morning of Mrs. Popo. There is a servant Luca who want to counsel his mistress, but she refuses because she loves her husband very much and she don't want to stop his mourning. And there is an intruder which is Smirov. Smirov wants his money. In second play, the dear departure, we see that both the sisters want to money. And in third play, we see that the convict and the sister also want the money. So we can say that all the three plays are based on the greed. All the three, uh, in first, the boor, Mr. Ismiro wants his own money, but in the second play, Amelia and Elizabeth wants the money of his father. They want to overtake the property of their father. It shows the greediness and the selfishness of them. Why? In the play Boor, which was written by Anton Chekhov, Mr. Ismiro wants his own money, which was not given by his debtors. He wants, he goes door to door to take his money, but everyone refuses him. Mrs. Popo also shows some excuses that her manager was not at what not at home at that time. He has went to the city. And in second play, we see that both the sisters are selfish. They want to overtake. Uh, first, in first scene, uh, in first scene, we can uh, we can see that Amelia said to his husband, "Please help me to take the bureau." in the other part of the house and she stole it without the permission of the owner and she thought the owner is dead and she shows and she pretend that she was become uh, she become she uh, is very unhappy on the death of his uh, grandpa or can be said the grandfather grand in, grandfather in law and her husband also help him the both the husbands are very honest both are very innocent to their uh, wives. In third play, which, uh, which is written for the bishop's candlesticks, he also shows the greed of her sister. His sister, which, uh, his sister who is Parsom, is also a greed sister. He is very greedy. He wants to overtake the property of her brother or she doesn't, if she doesn't want, she wants that her brother don't give the money to the other persons. He give the money to him, to her. Now, there is an intruder in this house also, as we see in the boor, and uh, that person is convict. Convict want to stole something in the house. While Mr. Bishop, who wants to help every needy person, shows sympathy with him, that you are an needy person, so you can stall anything in my house. They, the, everything is in your position. Now, the convict became confused and he behaved very rudely to Mr. Bishop. But Mr. Bishop is basically a kind-hearted person, so he don't want to left his kindness and shows very kindness to convict. And he shows sympathy with him and he gave him food. He said, to his sister to give him food. His sister became very angry on this decision. He said that he was a uh, thief and why don't you be so kind to a thief? We cannot change them. But Mr. Bishop said, yes, we can change them. And he behaved him very kind-heartedly. At last he said to him that please take a rest at my home. This is your home and take these candlesticks with you. What a kind-hearted person who gave the property of himself to other person because he cannot uh, find anything in the house worthy. So he gives the candlesticks to him. And he refuses his sister to give the candlesticks. The candlesticks also have a major role in this play. The candlesticks are given by the mother of Bishop and Pasom's mother. 
these are the olden property of these two brothers and sisters and they care it very carefully. These candlesticks are used in the church with a candle and are very beautiful as we as the uh, point, uh, as the writer described in this play. The bishop tells him to rest at his home. It shows the kindness of bishop. This point is very important because it shows the bishop's kindness who requests who request to a thief to rest at his home. Can we do it? I think no. Because we cannot believe on a person who was an intruder, who was a thief. But a kind-hearted person, the bishop, shows his kindness all the person with the same similarity. He shows his kindness, his uh, gentleness. He offers the candlesticks to the convict. He gives him with his wish that you can take over and you can take them away, all the candlesticks. While his sister said that it is not good. To make happy another person, why do, why do we become unhappy? She thinks that the property gives, him, gives us happiness. In a start we saw that she was she annoyed and she announced that all the other persons of this society take advantage of the kindness of the bishop. The bishop's kindness is very popular all over the area. So people come falsely and take money from him and take the, all the property. And he, uh, Mr. Bishop sold his, sold says also to help the poor persons. And then there is a time when he has only something, only some instruments in the house which, which can be said a property. In one of them, that is the candlesticks. And it, this is the title of the play. The candlesticks. Bishop's candlesticks. We can say that Bishop is a, a can be said the Bishop is a kind-hearted person. Bishop is an unselfish person. Bishop is a person who shows the gentleness, who shows the unselfishness and who shows the kindness to every person. And he offers his help every time which is, which is, which is found very rarely in the society. Now, I want to ask some questions about all the three plays which we have read in these two chapters. First is, first plays which is written by Anton Chekhov, the bear or the boar. Can uh, you think, do you think that there are some important questions can be asked from the boar? First is, why does Mrs. Popo mourning? Can you tell me? Why is Mrs. Popo mourning? And the answer is, Mrs. Popo is mourning because she feels very attached to her husband. She feels lonely, but she feels that she was a good woman and so this is the duty of her to show the love for her dead person. After seven months, she refused to stop the mourning. This is a very important question from this, uh, this uh, play. And now I want to ask you a question from Bishop's Candlesticks that do we, do we are as kind as Bishop? No. There are only rare persons who is as kind as the Bishop, who, who, uh, who sold his property to help the poor. And the convict is very rude fellow. And the next is, does Mr. Abel take the right decision of his marriage, we can say yes, every person have the right to be happy. And Mr. Abel take a step to be happy and he married a woman on, the, uh, uh, on Philip's church and he want to write his will once again. Now, this is enough for today. And now the theme of the last play and the bishop's candlesticks. The theme is centered on the kindness of bishop and the selfishness of person and the rudeness of the convict and the charity of Mr. Bishop. These are the four major themes of this play. The last and the third play, the bishop's candlesticks. The kindness, the kind-hearted bishop and the selfishness of his heart and his sister is very selfish and selfishness of his heart 
uh, of his heart, Mr. Bishop's heart, and the rudeness of convict who behave very rudely while the bishop helps him continuously. And now the charity, the last theme of the play is charity. He uh, sold his all the money, all the property to help the poor persons. Thanks.